I got a good one for you. Bob oh boy. in Tennessee, pronouns are he, him, says the Bible is absolute proof that a God exists. So welcome to the show, Bob. Oh. Oh, I hope no. you're doing well. Hello. And uh, are you doing well, Bob? I'm doing well, Matt. How are you? I, I'm doing I'm doing pretty well, yeah. And, and you're calling in because you think the Bible is absolute proof of God? Well, I was going to tell you that. Uh, and I got swatted down like a hot fly last time, so... Let me know when you want to start that 60 seconds, and I will give you my case. All right. Let's start the clock. You're on, Bob. Why is the Bible absolute proof of God? Okay. Well, saying it's an absolute, I'm going to read you the verse that sold me on Christ as my father from the King James Version. John 4.10, Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. I butchered some of the words, but Jesus is seeking her to spread the love of God, the giving, everything that he is, that he embodies. And that's, that's my case right there. I, I'm, I'm sorry. And I, and I want to let Captain Dadpool get in here, but you're saying that John verse chapter four, verse 10 is your case for how the Bible is absolute proof of God. That I, that's, that's my favorite verse. The reason being is because it embodies the, that Jesus goes to the Samaritan, the woman as she's described and shows God, to her through giving to go and spread the word of God. Okay. I, 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 I'm in complete disagreement, but I want to make sure Cap Dampel gets in. So what are you thinking? So you have a story of a man who tells a woman because of your hurt. Is this the woman with the issue of blood, by the way? Or am I thinking of a different story? Okay, yeah. Um, so that's a big problem right there. Um, that story is based around this woman being born with a perpetual issue of vaginal bleeding. I don't think and that's the Jesus story. heals her and literally says that this she was afflicted with this for the glory of God. So why would God afflict somebody for their entire life so that his son could come and heal that person to bring him glory? That seems rather fucked up to me i don't see it that way uh, that's so, not this story that's not this story oh, no sorry. that's uh sorry. he said that was. doesn't exist in the book of john so this is well, let's, let's just read let's let's just read the, it's it's the fir first part's just a handful of verses chapter four now jesus learned that the pharisees had heard he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than john although in fact it was not jesus who baptized but his disciples so he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came into a small a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. I don't know how they know that, but okay. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was around noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. And the Samaritan woman said to him, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews don't associate with Samaritans. That's verse nine. Then verse 10, which is Bob's favorite verse says, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now, Bob's claim is that this was Jesus showing God to her. I don't think that that's the case at all because in verse 11, she replies, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself, blah, blah, blah? And so they continue having this discussion. But I don't see anything in verse 7. Verse 7, first of all, let, let's, let's do this thing. You have no reason okay. to think. Now, listen, Bob. First of all, verse, verse 10. You have no reason to think that this was actually spoken by Jesus. You have no evidence that this was actually spoken by Jesus. So we're starting with a story. And so here's a story where Jesus tells a Samaritan woman, 
that if you knew the gift of God uh, and, and who's asking you for a drink, basically, if you knew who I was, you would have asked me for water because you would know that I can give you the living water. That's what Jesus is saying to her. Uh, Bob, there's zero evidence within that statement. There's zero evidence presented in the story. This is just a story about someone claiming by implication to be God. How does a claim by implication become proof that there is a God? Well, that's how you see it, Matt, as an implication. I don't. No, that's how anybody who can fucking read sees it. It's a fact. You don't have any evidence that Jesus said this. You don't have any, nothing. This is a claim okay. in a book by Jesus. How does an unsupported claim with no evidence for it, how does that claim become proof that a God exists? Okay, great. We can go there. What's the point of reading the Bible at all then? I don't, I don't have any reason to read the fucking Bible. It's your book, not mine. And I only read it. I only read it so that I understand it better than you guys, so I can show you where you're wrong about it. That's my reason for reading it. Well, Matt, there's a lot of wisdom in the Bible. It's vast. I love that verse because it shows what Jesus was about, trying to spread the word of God. So there's prosperity in that. There's love, and she did it of her own free will. And regardless of her you know that? in the past, that's the point. God still loves you. You're serious. Where's the Bob, you know that a lot of scholars reject John at almost entirely oh. as anything being anything that Jesus possibly ever said, because it's the latest gospel. It's written in the nineties. It does not contain any of the same information that is in a Matthew, Mark, or Luke. If you didn't know Matthew and Luke used Mark as a source, um, they have like 60, 70, 80% of the same information. But the book of John is about 95% unique. There's very little in it that you can find in the other Gospels. That is because it is the latest Gospel, and the author of John was trying to come up with their own Gospel. And if you, if you compare the two, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there's a clear distinction of Jesus speaking and the narrator. Right? You understand? In the book of John, there's no distinction. It flows together like the narrator is speaking as Jesus. So that's a big reason that scholars don't think John has any sort of credibility as anything being connected to Jesus well, Matthew, at all. Or John. Well, what about the other ones? Just because about, they, they look at that, they say, well, that's never not never claims to be God in any so, of the Gospels, not even John. Here's the, here's the really bad part for you, Bob. Let's assume that all four Gospels are accurately recording what was said. Uh huh. Let's just assume that all four Gospels accurately record what was said. So there actually was a Jesus, and he actually said what he said in verse 10. How does that prove that there's a God? I could say that statement, couldn't I? Uh, man, I'm just telling you that's my favorite. I don't, no, sir, I'm you're not. not. And no, sir, you're not. And now you're being fucking dishonest. Remember last time when you got Ow. smacked down like a hot bee? When you call in, and you tell the call screener that you're going that the Bible is an absolute that proves the existence of God. And then when I point out that your favorite verse does no such thing, and then you say, Oh, I was just calling to tell you what my favorite verse was. Go fuck yourself, Bob. I didn't put out a fucking show so that people could call in and tell me what their favorite verse was. You lied to the call screener, and now you're lying to me. You should be ashamed, sir. I misspoke. You didn't misspeak, you fucking liar. You didn't misspeak, you fucking liar. You should be ashamed. I'm sure Jesus is proud of you. Goodbye. If you're just going to lie to get on the show, I'm, I'm going to eat you alive. I, can't, I have zero tolerance for liars. I'd if Bob had just called in and said, "Well, I I was convinced that that verse was enough." Okay, we could have had that conversation, but when when exposed, it became, "Oh, well, I just want to tell you what my favorite verse is." Well, my favorite verse is First Peter three fifteen, which is to be prepared at all times to give the reason for the faith that's within you. Go be prepared, Bob. You're an embarrassment. 